At a time when the civilian government had just been toppled by the military, a phenomenal woman stepped forward to offer hope in a song. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to sit here with the legendary Nigeria Go Survive trainer, the incomparable Lady Venom Mario A. Nice to have you here, Ma. <laughs> so, what have you been up to all these years? Um, many things. Professional life. Uh, yeah. I'm a writer. Um, not just a singer, I'm a writer, I'm an editor. So, yes, I did all that. Then got married, then raised a family. Now I'm a grandmother. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm sure many people are still stuck with your name as Venom Mario. They don't know you're now Venom Imbanefo. The the mother, the uh, wife, the grandmother. I mean so much has happened since then. You sang one of the most evergreen Nigerian songs. Tell us about that. What were the pecs you enjoyed by virtue of the uh, each song's success? I would say maybe the only perk not in, in in singular that I enjoyed is uh, a name. Yeah. I got a name, but in terms of um, financial gains from royalties, no, I did not get. Oh, wow. That's a very controversial. I mean, because the number of artists that have sampled it, remixed the song, there's hardly any October one that the song is not played. It always enjoys airplay, every independence, because that's become a staple in the story of our independence so to speak and no royalty nothing no no oh, wow. well, the, the, for the artists who have done um, a remix of the song i gave permission for them to do that i mean but permission without anything going to you that shouldn't be well, so the recording company didn't pay me anything so oh, wow. i mean and i, I just felt um, that Nigeria Go Survive has become a kind of a social activist song. All right. So anybody who is coming, especially younger people who are coming to try and remix it, you know, I just think, okay, the more the merrier. You know, let me allow them. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's crazy. In Nigeria, we uh, the case is a prophet has no honor in his own country because we hear of uh, international stars like Arita Franklin, Roberta Flack, who are still enjoying a lot. I mean, they've been retired for years. Roberta Flack, Killing Me Softly, uh, which was remixed by uh, Fuji's, you know, Lauren Hill and the like. So she's still getting a lot of the song. And here you are, you have a song that's been popular for how many years now? 30 something years and nothing to show for it. Oh, wow. So are we going to believe that there was a time where you had a very low moment in your life and you're like, is this really me? Is this really Venom, the legend that everybody should be celebrating? I deserve better. I shouldn't be living this life. Was there a time like that? Uh, I would not say no. There was, of course, everybody has highs and lows. But no, I, with regard to this song, no. There was no... What they did was not right. Mm. But, I, you know, Venom is more than mm. a song. Like I told you, um, I'm also a writer. Yeah. You know, I went into the media. You know, I, I occupied uh, editorial positions in um, a media house. I was a senior writer. You know, there were so many other, there are many other things that go into making venue. So, yeah, the way they treated me it wasn't right. I mean, let's even leave um, the artist for now. You as a person. You know, I mean, this is you're someone that people should be adoring. Do you understand? I mean, like, it's really crazy because see the story of the man who uh, designed the Nigerian flag, for example. The last we heard, he was living in penury and no form of appreciation. So I think your song has become, like you said, a, 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 a song about a revolution. Do you understand? So I'm wondering how, how is that? Let's even forget about your other. Even if you decide not to work again for the rest of your life, you ought to still be enjoying a lot from that song. And then you're saying you didn't enjoy anything. So do you have any low moments where you said, ah, there's, there's got to be more than this? I was just very angry with the lies that the recording company told. Hmm. It was on the Tabansi label. Hmm. You know, although he was not originally my he was more like a marketing company yeah but my producer 
uh, who unfortunately lost his life before the album could be released. Oh, wow. He was the one that signed me onto his label. So, but because his partner did not have um, the platform, you know, right. uh, on which to market the album. So they gave the marketing rights to Tabansi and of course, manipulation and all came out of it for me and in fact there was a point at which they even went on a smear campaign and they, they just generally lied i didn't you didn't uh, consider suing litigation of, of some sort or was there any intervention from uh, concerned people no i just basically let it go really i mean i i could have sued them because my dad was a lawyer I could have sued them, but I just, like I told you, there's more to Veno than Nigeria will survive. You know, I had other exciting things to do. And anyway, my whole point in releasing that song was to give hope to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I just felt that, yes, if, if one Nigerian could get something from that song, then I would have succeeded in my mission. So yeah. Yeah, the money would have been nice, but I I didn't go hungry. Hmm. Okay. My lot has changed in the socio-economic landscape of Nigeria from then to now. I mean, this was 1983 or 1984 now. So that's how many years now? Sorry, my math is not great. 30 something. Yes, 30 something years. So then I know you were campaigning for Nigerians to stay back home, to build the nation and all. But I mean, the environment is no longer favorable. So are you still going to tell Andrew not to check out or do you think it's uh, wise to stay and build or is it foolish to actually stay back and hope for a better tomorrow for Nigeria? Okay, let me put it this way. If you feel very strongly that you need to go, then you can go. Um, but for me, I still believe I don't know some people are calling me some people call me a foolish optimist and you know i believe that in spite of everything that is going on and this situation doesn't look very good but i believe that god is going to turn this country around mm. and when he does it everybody is just going to be like wow we never saw that they coming. Are coming i mean we, we have nations that happen for we have singapore we have rwanda and the like yes. so just maybe very soon is going to happen we can only hope it happens in our lifetime it will happen. It will amen happen <laughs> amen yeah. so we should just continue to be optimistic so we're celebrating nigeria at 61 what message do you have to uh, nigerians out there what, what are you saying to nigerians what are you saying to the government just a word for everyone out there well you know um what i will say to the mm. government is um let's not behave like the ostrich and bury our heads in the sand mm. the truth is that there is a lot that we need to address mm. many are clamoring for restructuring i am all for restructuring mm. for any nation to be able to survive even a home to be able to survive there has to be equity and justice mm. and it's time for our leaders to really really look inwards and say has there been equity and justice in this country? Mm. The answer is no. no. So you need to you, you need to address all of that. We can't keep pretending that everything is okay. 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 Secondly, if you say you are a servant of the people, because that's what they always put forward. I want to serve my people. I want to serve. At the end of the day, they don't serve. They only serve their pockets. They become lords. Mm. You need to get that feudal mentality mm. out of your mind if you mm. are a leader. If you say you are a servant, then you have to serve. Yeah. Okay? I I graduated from the University of Jobs. Yeah. And I, I served, I, I did my national youth service in Kaduna. And, you know, I, I was close to practically every kind of every nigerian from different parts of the country southeast south south southwest you know the whole of the north yeah. and not once in all the years that i stayed in unijos and served in kaduna did i feel like an outsider yeah. 
and I'm very, very pained that, you know, under my nose, Nigeria has become a place where people are so, so deeply polarized mm. that everybody is now clamoring for give me my own country. Secession and all of that. But the truth of the matter is that even in a little village, mm. there will always be the people who think it is their right to mm. rule. Mm. Okay, so the answer is not that we should be splintered into small, small countries. Mm. The answer is make the center weak yeah. and let each region begin to develop along their own lines. Mm. The South-South has something to offer the whole of Nigeria. Yeah. South-East has something to offer. Southwest, the same thing. We are peculiar, but in our peculiarity, there is this cohesion. Mm. So we should all be allowed the North. They have, they have beans, they have rice, they have, they, they used to have ground up pyramids. Yeah. Where have all those gone? They have cotton, they have sugar. Mm. This country is a very rich country. Mm. There's nothing we don't have. We are totally made to be self-sufficient mm. but it is the kind of lack of vision mm. that has brought us here now i will speak to the younger generation mm. you know what has brought us here mm. do not continue <laughs> sadly <laughs> sadly some people are continue. saying that otherwise past. you won't have a country left mm. the things that you are complaining about in the older generation that brought us here, mm. please do not do them. Mm. You know what happens in uh, uh, countries in the Western world. We can build, we can build a first world country out mm. of this country. Absolutely. So all of you come together, you younger ones, and, and I'm supporting you with all my heart. I've kind of, I'm not putting the older generation down. No, there are really beautiful people among them who yeah. care for the younger generation and want this country to be where it's supposed to be. But I have to say I'm disillusioned mm. with the majority of them. But I'm begging and pleading with the younger generation. Please do not follow in the footsteps mm. of your elders, okay. except where the footsteps are good ones. Mm. Amen. We can only hope uh, and uh, pray that that happens. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. And I hope that the word you sent out there, I mean, you, you're you here advocating for unity and diversity. So I hope that this goes to, it goes to a large extent, you know, to preach the gospel of unity and then people looking inwards and doing better for themselves. Thank you so much once again for being a part of this. I really, really appreciate you. And to every one of us out there, happy Independence Day. Have a good one.